Ready, Ryder? So good. What's up guys? I'm John the Potter and welcome back to another pottery video. Today we are talking about making coffee pour over mugs. And these things are sweet for a single cup serve coffee. So we're going to show you how to do it. Ryder's not going to show you, I'm going to show you. So a ceramic coffee pour over has a base that will fit on top of another mug and then it has holes and what you do is you put a coffee filter in there with coffee and then you just pour hot water over the top of it, the coffee brews and then the coffee drips into the mug. You don't need any power, you don't need any special equipment, all you need is one of these and a coffee grinder or ground up coffee. So we'll be in the studio, I'll show you how to do it. Ready Ryder? All right, here we are in the studio and we are gonna be making these pour overs. So we got my clay, gotta start with about anywhere between one and a quarter and one and a half pounds I'd say is a good place to start. It's always nice to start with a little too much because if you start with too little, you can't add it. So you can always cut off the top and make it a little smaller. So we're gonna get into it. We got our clay, it's about one and a quarter pounds. Throw it down right in the center. If you need to learn how to center, I got a great video about that. Go ahead and watch that. So I got my clay in the center. So I'm gonna squish it down a little bit more than I normally would so that the base is thick because we wanna make sure that the base is thick enough that it covers the mug. First thing I'll do is I'll go down in the center. So I got my hole in the center now. Instead of coming and taking the clay from the bottom, I'm gonna go up maybe about a half an inch and start taking the clay in from there. So if you can see from right here, I'm doing that. Normally I'd put my finger down here, but in, in this case, we wanna leave that bottom for that saucer that goes on top. And so now I'm basically just throwing a bowl right from here and I want that bowl to be the shape of a coffee filter. So I, now I'm just pulling up the clay from the bottom so you just want to make sure that this is going to be wide to get around any mug that you want to use it on. I'd say that's about good for the shape. Most of the work on this project comes after the throwing because if you just keep it like a bowl shaped, then sometimes that filter will suck to the end. So you actually want to make either like ridges, some kind of way so that the air can get in there so that it can let the water go through. So I'm just creating little ridges in there. There's little ridges in there. That really helps with the functionality of it. All right, here we go for number two. Gotta refuel with coffee. Can you ever have too much coffee? I don't think you can have too much coffee. I mean, if you're shaking and can't concentrate, then you probably had too much coffee. So we're not gonna come from the bottom. We're gonna come from just slightly up. Then we're gonna push in. So we're basically just throwing like a small bowl off of this little tiny hump. I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna make little lines in there like this. So there we go, there's number two. Number three. Just experiment with a bunch of different patterns on the inside and the outside and just see what works the best. Try making coffee in them and see which ones work. We got our three shapes thrown, one, two, three. So now we're just gonna cut them off the wheel. So I'm taking my wire and running that right underneath. And then we'll let these dry for three to six hours, depending on how dry it is in here. And then we'll come back and we'll put handles on them and then we'll cut the holes in the bottom and we'll show you how to, on the other side, because it's really important that you don't just cut holes and then leave it flat because the way that the coffee drains through there, if you just leave it flat, then it drips all over the place. So you have to do some special stuff to the bottom. We'll be back to do that. These are dry enough now that we can flip them over. We just got one more to do. 
So I'll run that wire under there one more time. We just gotta wait for these to get a little more dry so that we can trim the bottom of this. And then we'll put handles on too. Check out some of these, look how high that is. That's like eight feet high, piled in the middle of the road. It's unbelievable. We are back in the studio to finish these coffee pour overs. So I got them right next to me and they are dry enough to start trimming them. So we're gonna trim the bottom and then we'll put handles on. The first thing I'm gonna do is just put some holes in there so that I have a frame of reference to trim. If I look, I'm just gonna put one hole right in the middle. And then I'll make these holes like better after I'm done trimming them, but I just wanna make sure that I'm gonna trim in the right spot. So I'm gonna just do, make one, this one just like I did the other one where I do three holes in a row. So I'm just looking right there. And you can put these holes, you could put five holes, you could put 10 holes, you could put one hole. Um, it just matters how fast the coffee's gonna come out and so how long the actual water is brewing. So that's pretty good. I'll make those better and more consistent when I'm done trimming but at least now I have like the bottom, I can tell where I'm gonna trim. So now we're gonna get this in the center. So when I trim, I like to just run a little needle and then make adjustments based on that. All right, so I got it in the center. So now when you're trimming, there's one really important thing to do with pour overs. And you can do this in a couple different ways. The way that I like to do it is to trim two different places. So we're gonna start trimming from here out, and then we're also gonna trim from here in, but we're gonna leave a little rim right there. If you don't do that, then the coffee will come through and it'll just slide to the edge and then you'll just have a mess and then we'll leave a rim, and then we'll trim from the out, from this side all the way out. So I'm keeping my finger underneath here, otherwise you could bend it a little bit. So I just have that one finger underneath here. And then the last thing I'll do is just kind of round out this edge, so this is nice. I'll probably even just take a sponge. I'll just go back in here, kind of make these holes a little nice, then I'll have to go flip it around on the other side. Just make them so they're nice and smooth. Basically, that's about it. You could also use a coil to just add a rim. So I have it trimmed pretty flat. I did do a little bit in there, but now I have a coil. This is probably just a little bit more complicated than the other way, and that's why I usually just trim the rim in there, but that works too. The last thing we gotta do is get handles on there. So I have this fancy extruder that I love, but if you pull handles, then pull a handle, use a little slicer to slice your handle off. There's lots of different ways to make handles. I'm just gonna extrude some handles because that's the quickest and easiest way that I do it. We got our handles extruded and ready to be put on. So then basically you're just gonna put on a handle like you would normally put on a mug. I just gotta put the rest of the handles on these, uh, kinda smooth out those holes in there, and then we'll just let these dry and uh, fire them and glaze them in a few days. So we got our five pour overs done. Got handles on, got the holes all in there and all cleaned up. Now we're just waiting for them to dry and then we'll bisque them. When finishing them, make sure that however you finish it, you're not gonna get a bunch of glaze like pooling in the bottom and sticking in there. That'll get all over your kiln and ruin your piece and just don't do that. It's just, just trust me, just trust me. So if you wanna see how these finished, Tune into the next video, which will be unloading the kiln of all these done. That's it for this video. Thanks for joining me. Hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. Like this video, comment below, let me know if you tried this project, how it worked out for you. Share the videos with your friends. Thanks for watching.